Let's take a walk through the code in this LabVIEW project. Begin by reviewing the overall structure. The tick count built-in function returns the uh, number of milliseconds since the academic Rio device powered up. The feedback node recalls the value from the previous loop iteration. Taking the difference of the two, that's the amount of time that elapsed per loop iteration. And that's reported on this indicator. The second process loop uses the identical code. And the difference between the two is that one is a conventional while loop or a non-deterministic loop, and the other is the timed loop, also called a deterministic loop. They both have the same number of milliseconds, or that is 100 milliseconds per loop iteration. Both of these loops stop from a single stop button on the front panel. And a local variable is used to communicate the value of the stop button from one process loop to the other. The local variable is based on front panel controls and indicators, so you select the appropriate one and then you can select either read or write mode for the local variable. Double click right here to configure the time loop. You can select your clock source type and then you select the period up here. Now let's consider some of the details involved in stopping multiple process loops from a single stop button. The timed loop pulls the front panel control stop. Note that its mechanical action needs to be switch when pressed. I'll point out that when you first create a stop button, its default value is latch when released. If you were to leave it with this mode, you'll see that you can't run the VI and the error message says that you cannot use the latch mechanical action. Any of the three switch-based methods is fine. I tend to use switch when pressed. Let's examine this little detail down here. I'm going to comment out the part where I'm using the local variable reference and see what happens. VI is running, hit stop. You'll notice that the button is stuck in the stopped state. And if you try to run when it's stopped, both loops come to a stop because the button effectively is already clicked. So let's take out this code. And what we see here is that the initial button is pulled, stops the top loop, local variable is read, stops the bottom loop. And the very last step then is to unstick or release the front panel button.